Hi guys, so today we are going to be reviewing the Anna Griffin um, candy cane or what does she call it? Gingerbread house easel die. I don't know why it would be candy cane house. I just threw that out there. But anyway, so I just picked this up. If you guys saw the haul from HSN, I grabbed pretty much everything she and Crafty's Companion brought that I was interested in. So I knew there was a few things that I really wanted to get and I was like on it because sometimes they do sell out. And, um, and so... This is one of them. So these are the instructions, and these are even more basic than the Halloween, uh, the Haunted House one. It's only one sheet. And so there's a couple little pictures that you can kind of see what's going on. But on the back, it just says, basically you're gonna cut the card base, cut a shadow layer, cut and emboss the top die cut layer. Then you're just gonna fold down that, that base, put a little piece of um, adhesive on there. So this is nothing different than um, the haunted house and then you're gonna do your shadow layer of course and then she wants you to uh, foam you know, use foam adhesive to add the top uh, most layer the little die cut layer that has the embossing and of course decorate have you like so I'll probably decorate well I don't know if I'll decorate while it's on there we'll see as far as that and then that's it so then you need it and then you can open up your card and you put a little a little sentiment or some kind of topper here that will hold it up right so that's all that's there Really cute. Let's go over the dies really quickly. I don't know if I have this set up the way I like. I feel like I have to get really close to not show the uh, tripod over here. Let's see how far I can go. Still no tripod? Okay, I guess we're good. Okay, so this is the long die, and she did mention on the Hannah House die to be very careful with it, and you know, she had to cut it a certain way, and she used that new cutting mat. Thank you, guys. Um, the magnetic mat that she has new is more like, um, like a self-adhesive, uh, not self-adhesive, self-healing mat is what it looks like but it has the magnetic um, you know shim built into it so I am definitely gonna get that I have to keep my eye out for it. I haven't even tried to buy it yet so I need the two sizes for the small um, the, you know, the regular cutting plates but the extended one also and um, people have been asking about this yes Anna Griffin is coming out for it with a mini impress it's gonna be the next thing on um, in November for the today special for HSN I think it's on the 5th I don't remember you can check out HSN's website. So she does have a mini impress coming out. I don't know anything about it as far as the size of the opening. Maybe it's four and a half, I'm assuming, because if it was six inches, then what's the difference of, you know, just having your impress? So uh, probably four, four and a half inch opening. And then, you know, I'm sure she'll do a sneak video. She already did a sneak peek, but she didn't talk about it much. So just keep an eye out for that. This one, let me see. Um, I think you're gonna need the extended cutting plates, even though it's not that tall. What is going on here? I can't get my plate out, hold on. Oh yeah, you'll definitely need the extended cutting plate. I'm like falling all over the place here. Um, so this is the regular cutting plate, it's too short. So you're gonna need extended plates in whatever machine you have, it's a longer um, item here. Uh, I don't see any problem if fitting through a cuddle bug or a big shot, it's not that wide. But you do need the longer plates. And then we have our different layers, and then as far as layering up, we have this cute little topper here. It's gonna go on this roof area. We do have uh, two candy canes facing either way instead of flipping one over and then still having it not look as nicely die cut as the first. So that's nice. I'm glad she did that. We have little windows um, treatments <laughs> here. Uh, what is this? Um, like hard candy. Or little candies. And then they have a blackout or shadow layer. This guy does not have a shadow layer and I thought, hmm, is that right? So I looked on her examples and yeah, they don't have a shadow layer on that one. So that one's just what it is. You can place it here if you want um, or just use it however you like. Uh, the lollipop and then um, the little door which is adorable so I was just thinking how do I want to do this because the ones that she has on here are very green and red red and white this one's just white and gold but I kind of wanted to make it even more gingerbready right more festive like candies and stuff like that so I went through my stash and these are the first <laughs> Christmas papers I found actually this was the first one and I thought oh this is perfect because this is kind of what I had in mind like Maybe like nice blue colors, something something cute like that, I don't know. This is Pebbles Cozy and Bright. Obviously I got it at Tuesday morning. Um, look how cute this paper is, oh my goodness. This has so much glitter, but this so much glitter is, uh... hey, that's pretty good. Cause I was I kind of feel it like crumbling in my hand, but it really, well, a little bit. Anyway, you can't see it, but okay. Really cute glitter papers. So maybe I'll do the background. I don't know, I may not even use this one. But then I was like, do I, I want something brown, right, for the topper, I still want it to look gingerbread. So the very top of the house that we're gonna emboss, I want gingerbread looking. So I found this right next to the other one in my stack over here. Well, I have them on a 
shelf. Um, this is the, where is it? Mary Mary, I guess, set. And just down here, I'm like, that's what I want, that brown color right there. So I'm going to, that's, <laughs> it's just basically a craft card, to be honest. It doesn't have anything fun or extra special about it, but there's lots of colors in here. There's lots of different things, I guess I could, oh, how cute would this one be? The little green striped, but I want it to look gingerbread -y. So we're gonna use that. So let me um, cut some of those pieces. I'm probably gonna grab some of, what else do I need? I'm trying to look at this. Because we're going to do this little top of the house. This is brown. Oh, we're going to need that to be white, I think, just so it looks like icing, right? So I'm going to grab some white paper, some red, maybe some gold. Other light blue colors. I don't know. Whatever I think is going to coordinate. And we will be right back to start cutting. Okay, so I'm using my Anna Griffin Empress. I have the cutting plate. I'm um, sorry about that shine there. I have my magnetic mat, and the reason, because I have this older magnetic mat, the well, the original is not that old, I guess, cause it's the original one. Um, I know you can see it kind of digs into your mat, and I do not want that to happen again, and I'm not going to risk that. So I do like to put the metal shim, even though it's not necessary. Okay, this just adds some thickness, it makes it cut better, but I don't want my die cutting into or digging into my um, magnetic mat. So if you have the new one, don't worry about it. And basically, I'm going to cut out this base one, and I am going to just leave it face up. So cutting edge is facing up. And then I'm going to cut the, um, well, I'll talk about that in a second. So I'm going to cut this one. And I just chose this paper because I think it's cute. Now, when you fold this over, so this is a single-sided paper. Um, this is going to be the base of the card. When you go to fold it over, you have to think about what you want. So if you want the pattern to show, that needs to be up because what you're going to fold over, which should be the white part, is going to stick to the base card, um, the shadow layer. So, you know, when I'm done cutting this, I kind of want it face down because my card's going to be nice and then we're going to fold that area over. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. If you don't care about the edges, the way they look, if you want to push down into the paper so it looks nice, and you definitely need to pay attention to how you're going to cut your paper. But I'm just going to put this on here, I'm going to run it through, and then I'm going to um, go ahead and cut out the shadow and the top layer, probably together at the same time because the this this can run through your regular old, any old plates, but I'm going to cut out the shadow in a blue paper, and uh, excuse me, <laughs> and then I'm going to cut this one out in the craft paper, and I'll be back so we can do the embossing on that. Okay, so... I'm gonna try to back up just a little more still. See, there's my tripod. I don't like that. Okay, well, we have our base <laughs> layer here, which it'll be in frame in just a second because we're gonna fold that over. And I just finished cutting these guys out, so I have my little uh, shadow layer, which like I said, I wanted it to be kind of in those blue colors. Obviously, this thing pushed in really hard. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my gosh. But I'd rather have it on that metal thing than on my uh, magnetic mat. And then we are going to emboss this guy. So what's kind of cool about this is that since I have the metal shim there, well, actually it doesn't matter. I was say it kind of helps you pick it up without messing it up too much because basically we need to get this magnetic mat out. And we can pop our shim back in, but it doesn't matter however you, I mean, if you want to do that so that it stays nice and everything. Other than that, you're just going to line it back up, whatever happens here. It cut out really nicely. If there's anything extra, little papers that are going to be in your way, make sure to get rid of those. I'm just going to get rid of that metal shim. And I'm going to have my rubber, well, this facing up, right? The cutting edge is still facing up. And where is my rubber mat? I threw it to the floor. I just have to throw things on the floor. I feel like I'm on TV or something. I just <laughs> Somebody else will take care of that later. But it'll be me. All right. Uh, plate. So two A plates die facing up with paper still in it and I'm gonna run it through real quick at this point I didn't have to use this, the extended plates but we did all right so we have our base card all we're gonna do is sorry fold it over and I'll show you the little mat, rubber mat right now but we're gonna fold this over it already has um, what's the word uh, scoring right because the tool the die scores it for you and then if you want to do any kind of you know um, inking or anything around this it doesn't show that much because the other one pretty much sits right on top of it is what I remember maybe it might show a little bit but if you want to do that go ahead uh, I'm just gonna use a hopefully a tape 
runner? Is it going this way? Is this thing out? Oh, it's out. Okay, let's try another one. <laughs> uh, this one. So I'm just putting on this very bottom flap, if you can see that. And then this guy, she didn't say, well, the instructions don't say much. I'm going to just put it, I know in the other video she says to align it left and right, but not up and down, which is kind of odd. But I haven't seen a video of hers on this yet, so I don't know. There is some white showing. It doesn't bother me. Like, that is fine. Um, if it's double-sided paper, just remember that what you're going to do. And then this is going to just, let's crease that fold. It's going to pop up like this. Super cute. I love those papers together. But again, we are going to add our little guy. Ooh, that's shocking me over here. Now, if you want to ink in here, you know, feel free. I think we're going to just so you can see something different. But at the same time, it still has another layer that we're going to pop over the top. So I don't know how much of it will show. But let me grab some brown ink. Hope I have some here. I know I have some here. Okay, I have Seal Brown, which is a super dark Harmony water reactive ink. And I'm just going to grab any old applicator like this one already has some. Well, you know what? Lies. I'm going to use this one. If you guys remember, I used this recently in another video and it has brown on it already. So I'm just going to take that and just rub it over the... I'm going to turn over my mat. I just realized I have the squishy side up. And, you know, if you want to do red in the brick area, just so it brings out a little something. Whatever you like. It looks like there's a lot of areas that you can actually emboss with color, but... Or ink up. Okay. Let's pop this little guy out. Aww. Yeah, so there's lots of little areas. If you want to do the ink, it would definitely take some ink. We are going to put candy canes here. We're probably going to put the little things there. And then we have... So, you know. It didn't do the best job of embossing, though. I don't know if you can see. It's not that deep. But... You know, it might have to do with this craft paper because obviously craft is a little thicker and it does not want to budge as easily. But this thing came out nice and clean. A couple little areas I gotta clean out still. Let me put this away. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not sure if I want to decorate this yet or put this on here first and then decorate it or however. Oh yeah, so there's a little bit of an edge. I couldn't remember. Well, the haunted house might be different, but where's my haunted house? I don't know. Oh, it's over there. Oh yeah, there's an edge on it. Okay. So we can put this right down. Again, she says to pop dot it, so that's why I feel like I should decorate this flat. And then we will, um, you know, uh, add it on later with the uh, foam adhesive. So let me go ahead and cut out a bunch of these other things. I'm gonna cut this out in white paper. I'm gonna cut this out maybe in red paper because that'd be cute. Well, yeah. And then like maybe a light blue door. I wanna bring in the light blue, but I like the red too. So I don't wanna do too much red and we'll see. And then I'll cut out some of these other Candies, maybe white hair, red background, a couple of those. Um, and then, of course, the candy canes should probably... You can cut it out whatever color you want. So if you want red in the background, cut this out in white. Or cut the background in white and cut the top in red. However you like. Or tutti fruity colors, whatever it is that you want. So I'll be right back. I'm going to run all these through. Um, this does not have uh, any embossing, it doesn't look like. Because all these pieces cut out. So there's not really anything to emboss there. Other than maybe this line right here. But I'm not going to be too concerned with that. This one does have a little embossing on the little uh, window. So I will definitely run that through with the rubber embossing again. Um, and the door is all cut out. So, okay. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, I normally would clear this out, but I'm just going to spray this. I just want to show you. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm using the Dollar Tree uh, Beacon Value Adhesive Spray to get these little tiny pieces onto like this. Right? So we have the little shadow layer. So just turn it over. Give a little spray. <laughs> I just used it and everything was fine, but now it's like, ah, I'm a little stiffer. Okay. I'm going to wipe a little bit off because I did it quite a bit. And I'm just going to put that on there. And then just hold it down. Of course, if you have a, you know, Xyron, or just use a fine tip applicator, however you want. But I'm going to uh, do that with the candy canes too. And I think that's the only other thing that I need to do. And I'll be right back. Okay, so I did want to see... Um, that I just cut this little guy out in purple, even though there's not purple really anywhere else on the card, but I remember that I had some leftover pieces from a tutorial I did the other day, um, printing out your own things from the Crafters Companion like magazines. And I had some of this purple left, so I'm like, oh, that's, and it was perfectly just the size of this. And I did want to show you that it is so thick that it embossed anyway, even without rubber embossing the little bow down at the bottom. And it was really stuck in there. So those are going to go there. 
Uh, let me put this back here before I lose it. I'm going to squirt the back of this with some of the same glue and stick it down right here. So when we come back, we'll have that done. And then I just want to show you with the little windows. I knew that there was going to be some, some embossing, so I did ink embossing. I didn't run it back through with the rubber mat. So uh, all I'm doing is dipping in this Midnight and just really rubbing it in there. Really getting in there because um, I didn't use the rubber mat, so it's not super embossed. Nothing else, everything else cuts out, so there's nothing else to emboss on that. And then the door has a little tiny doorknob, I guess, right here. So I'm just going to do the same thing and try to get in there with this ink. Hey, there we go. Okay, I'll be right back. Before I spray this on, actually, I guess I'll just do it on camera. I did want to go around the edges of this with a little bit of the brown ink, just to distress it a little bit so it looks a little baked, I guess. So let me, since the edges do kind of show, I'm doing this a little more than I wanted, but that's okay. <laughs> And if you just want to lay it down, use a tool or just a finger dauber. Since the other day I didn't mention daubers in a video and people were like, what about daubers? It's because they're kind of expensive. But then people are saying, you can get them at AliExpress now. You can find them at the Dollar Tree, which I have never seen at the Dollar Tree. But use whatever you like for distressing things, obviously. All right. That's good. Just a little something. And then, ugh, well, since I'm here, I might as well just do it on camera. I don't remember what side I sprayed on. I guess it was the other side. So I'm just going to add some spray on the back of this. I'm going to wipe this off real quick. It has a really strong spray. like. <laughs> and if there's any extra, just kind of dab, dab it off. Dab it off. I don't know what I was saying. Okay. Yeah, some dripped on my hand. All right. We're going to put this here. Oh good, a lot of that got covered up anyway. I was like, I went a little overboard on my distressing there. Okay, I'm going to hold this down, try to not get my dirty hands on this, and once it dries, I'll be right back so we can finish decorating. So I told you guys I should turn this mat over, right? Look at, ah! Oh, great. <laughs> it's because the side's a foamy layer, so that when you stamp it, you get a really nice image because it's pushing back at you, but now it's there and it's going to be on the back of this card, so oh well. Okay. Let's get this all put together. This is really cute, coming together really nicely. I'm just going to use this um, all-purpose glue that I got from Crafters Companion. Again, if you want to do any more inking or, or even leave the little doors. Oh, that would be cute. Make them a little more dimensional. What do you guys think? Yes, we'll do that. So, I'm just going to lightly put some glue all along here. Try to really tack it down. But, uh, there we go. And I'll do the same thing for the other window. So whatever I'm doing here, I'll do on the other side, too. This is so cute. Hopefully that's straight. There's a little bit of a embossing area here um, with a little window planter. How cute would that be to put, like, little flowers? Just add some little flowers in there. Adorable. I think that's a cute idea. And we all have many tiny little uh, flower dies. And this guy probably goes here. Well, not just probably, but for sure goes right here. There's like an embossed area where you can kind of see where that should go. So I'm just going to put them over that spot. And then hopefully it's straight. I can't tell, but I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then we have candy cane. I guess if you really want to, you can only do the outline of the candy cane if you wanted to because it has embossing. So it's not like you have to have to put that candy cane there or double it up. Here, but that's going to go there. Super cute. And I think I'm going to pop dot these guys. Pop them up. Wouldn't that be better? Just a little something different. So I'm going to use foam adhesive on that part. But when I come back, I'll have some foam on there. I'll put them right in that spot. Um, I think that's the... Oh, then the door. I'll just glue the door down. Right there. Okay? I'll be right back. Okay, guys. You know what? This did not take very long. I just turned it over and put some uh, foam adhesive wherever I felt like it should go. Maybe it needs more, but that's okay. I put tons of it, and I already took the backs off it, so we don't have to <laughs> fuss with that here. And we are going to put this right on top. Oh, no! I got that blue. <laughs> I told you. Trying to accommodate people said my craft mat was messy, and now... I got mess on my card. Oh well, that's fine. That's fine, it's fine. 
Maybe I'll put some little topper on there that make it look like glitter, right? Like, uh, let me turn this over right now. This is not okay. I just said it's fine, but it's not okay. All right, <laughs> let's turn this over. Oh, ugly mat. Okay, so hopefully I got that. It's a little bit crooked. You're supposed to eyeball this thing from the top and you know, you know how that goes for me. All right, there it is. Maybe I'll try to clean that up. I can't believe that. But look how cute this is. I love leaving the little doors open. I think that's a cute idea. The little shutters, a little bit open. And then you see it through the back. Now, if I thought about it a little bit better, I thought that brown was gonna show. So like the door is blue and the back is blue. So maybe I should do a different door, but that's okay. But look how cute the little dimensional adhesives down here. And like I said, I did want red and white, but I didn't want too much. So like, I think I like that I did red, white here, white, red here. And then these guys are purple, but you know what? Whatever is gonna keep it up. I think maybe I'll add something that has some purple in it. So um, I love, the colorway right now is really cute. Cause of course it all came, actually most of the paper came from this other pack that I was gonna show you guys. I don't know why I didn't mention it. The Holly Jolly Christmas pack from Echo Park. And what I'm assuming is that it has a bunch of tags in here. So I'm gonna use something like that for the pop-up. Holly Jolly Christmas. Oh, that's cute. Or maybe this one. Mm, mm -hmm -hmm. I don't know. But that's also a sticker, so I, I kind of would have to stick it on something else, which I did last time in the other tutorial. So let me see if there's any, like, tags I can cut out or something. I don't know. Let me choose something that we need to keep this up. And I was actually just going to build up a bunch of these little things. You can just use a bunch of these guys, maybe, put them there. You know, it's not a big deal. I will be right Okay, back. so I'm like, where are these tags that they show in the front? Well, it's on the front page, which is a good use, because obviously you're not gonna really use this, right? Instead of cutting up something that you might use, it was on the back side of the uh, cover page. I was like, oh, well, there it is, because I knew they had little tags on here, so cute. And that actually, the other sentiment probably would look cute right here, that sticker that I showed you guys, but that's okay. I'm just gonna use this Merry and Bright, and I'm gonna do it off camera because I don't wanna, you know, keep you guys waiting here, but basically you're just gonna add some dimensional adhesives um, on the back of this or whatever it is that you want to use for your stopper and just place it there and it will hold your little card up. So thanks for watching guys. This is a really quick card. To be honest, I think it looked, took me about 40 minutes. So I don't know how long this video is because you know, but it didn't take that long. So maybe even less than that. Bummer that I got ink on there. I'm gonna try to wipe it off, but, uh, thanks for watching guys. Super cute. Um, I don't know if it's still available on HSN, but Anna Griffin also has her own website and everyone still has like free shipping or sales and stuff like that. So check that out and I'll have pictures for you and I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.